I got messy. I got messy. Urgh. The printer bought Simple Metal's full metal construction combined with a GT2 belt pulley system produces a 3D print that rivals that of most 3D printers costing thousands more. The 1.75mm Ubi's Hodden can print down to 100 micron resolution, and calibrating the Simple Metal's build plate using the auto leveling probe couldn't be easier. Learn more about my favorite 3D printer and the winner of Make's 2015 Thin Wallet Award by visiting printerbot.com. So we can't find the instructions, of course. So we're just moving on to unbox everything. We got the rails, the awesome tabletop. Of course, thanks Inventables to sending this on over. And we're gonna get some stuff unpacked here. We'll lay it all out and we'll kind of go over what's here and the ridiculous amount of assembly. This is not your normal 3D printer. This is more like a rep wrap. We're gonna put everything together. So let's see what we got. Stabby stabby. Isn't this, isn't it the cutest little knife ever? So much better than bat knife. Oh, shots fired. So we've been looking around for the instructions and at this point we can only assume that you're supposed to download them from online. Uh, Cause we haven't found any. We found a nice note that says, you know, if you have any problems, call this number. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna take a look at what we got here. Cause even I don't know, we have a parts list, but awesome rails they're super slick looking i love the black we have the huge uh you know base the sacrificial base your stepper motors they're of course nema they're 23 motion controller we have the core components which i don't actually know what's in this box so let's all learn together oh it's the big metal components so we have your gantry right side I'm guessing your gantry left side. A couple more of the smaller rails. And oh my god, that is a million bearings and ball clips and things like that. Uh, we're going to be here a while, Lucy. Lucy. So what else do we got? I will say, guys, the, the powder coating or anodizing, I guess it's actually anodized aluminum because it doesn't weigh some of it's steel some of it's it looks like anodized aluminum like that's steel but the uh it's all super high quality like really impressed even though it's a kit i mean there's no way you're going to ship this you know 90 percent, 95 percent of the cnc mills or cnc machines you buy are going to come at least you know partially assembled or in in a kit like this so no biggie there we have the spindle so this is the, you know, the router motor. And I'm just going to take this out and show it to you guys real quick. So dust cover. And this is, of course, the upgraded motor because, like I said, rolling large. Wow, even it's anodized aluminum. Just love it. Like, I, I don't know. I get, I get a nerdgasm with just, like, you know... How, how smooth everything is and how well milled. And Venables, again, thank you, Inventables. So we got that stuff here. Let me take that up. I had to make sure I didn't hit a light. That would have been bad. And so there's basically your router housing. Quick change bit, which is important because remember when you're, when you're 3D printing something, you tell, you know, you're limited by the nozzle size for how big or how small, how fine you can go. When you're routing, it's what size bit you have in the chuck is the, the, the minimum size. So, you know, think about if you're routing, like plunge routing something, and you want a very fine line, you can only go as small as won't break. And let me tell you, if you move the stepper motors too fast on a CNC mill, this thing's spinning at like 20,000 RPM. It's really impressive when a bit lets go, which is why you always want to wear these safety glasses. And I do want to be Norm Abram. I won't lie. Norm's the man. I have his book. Even. That's how nerdy I am. Okay, I'll get rid of that one too. Oh 
Okay, so we're still rolling through here. There's a lot of parts, as you guys can tell. Um, yeah, this this might be a couple week long project just to put this bitch together. But we have the, the power supply. So we have the housing for it here with all your on off switches and everything. We have your power plug, a couple of screws for the housing. We have, oh, the circuit board. So this is the, let's get this open. This is the circuit board to uh, the power relay. So basically, you know, we're going to be doing some wiring here ourselves. Uh, so you have your terminals and your, your AC in and your on off switch. And then you want to know how many amps this sucker is going to take because I'm still curious because I only got a 30 amp circuit out to the garage. You think I'd be better at pulling things out of boxes by now, don't you? Okay, I give up. I was trying to be nice. So this is like a workbench power supply. It is, well, it doesn't say. 24 volt, 17 amp. I have a hard time believing that. Uh, 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 well, apparently it's 17 amps. Why do you have a hard Max time? Max 17 that? amps. I don't know, because it's a piece of woodworking equipment. I guarantee you my table saw takes more than 17 amps because I dim the lights in the house when I turn it on. Okay, so that's that stuff. So, real quick. So that's less than 480 watts. Yeah. So that's actually not too bad. No. Well, because all you're doing, I mean, it's in reality, it probably takes less power than a 3D printer. And there's no heat. You're not, and you're not creating a lot of drag on the head if you're going at a reasonable speed. Right. And if you go at an unreasonable speed, you're going to burn things down. Yeah. Right. Or, or break, break bits. Yeah. Yeah. So that is one thing. I guess, yeah, in, in hindsight, I guess, you know, other than spinning the motor, which is probably, you know, at this day and age, a pretty efficient motor. And it's not a big motor. Like, I have routers that are way bigger than that motor. Um, it's probably, yeah, I mean, moving the gantry is no more power than moving the gantry on a... On a 3D printer. I mean, maybe a little because it's heavier. But, yeah, I mean, I bet it's less power to spin the, the drill bit than it is the to, to heat the print head. Agreed. So, ah, well, and it's a nicer, I uh, might have to open it up and see. Let's see, whoever WeHo is. I don't know who WeHo is. If you know, say down in the comments because... Uh, well, I guess it's just going to be on the garage, so who cares anyways? If it burns the garage down, my garage not attached to my house. If it burns my garage down, eh. Insurance company, I never said that. So we got the, uh, the stepper motors. Oh, they're actually really big stepper motors, too. That's nice. So they're NEMA 23. They are really hefty. And the, the, uh, the bigger guys, you always get the, the shaft goes all the way through. So, always something to keep in mind. So we got two of those. We have got a million more screws and four total because you have X, Y, and two for Z. Because remember, on this, you're raising the gantry. It's a big gantry. So like on my solid doodle, I only have one Z axis motor because it's just moving a, a light print plate. On this, you're moving a spinning drill bit, so it's a little bit, you know, firmer, as they say. That's what she said. And then we get the controller, and this is basically all your, oh God, that's never a good sign. So, anything that comes with something like this always scares me, because it means it's a header that we have to put into something. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Fan cover. This is the box of horrors for me, by the way, because I don't like wiring. Another fan, or actually a fan. Uh, yeah, so there's your wire, because we're gonna have to wire, at the very minimum, the power. We have headers and screws and screws and screws. And so oh good. Yeah, so we got crimping. Those are for the headers. As you can tell, I'm excited about wiring this. 
so I used to wire, I used to do car harnesses a long time ago. Uh, which is why I have a deep hatred of doing wiring. I'm just not a big fan. There's some people that love it, and there's some people like me that uh, not a big fan. So this is the board itself, the controller board. And it's a G shield. So it's obviously a custom board. <laughs> Rule number one, attach the power correctly. Because they would suck to turn it on and be like, Zzz, and you're done. Because you wired it backwards. I, I bet you they do have, I bet you the instructions are online. If you're wondering, Jason's behind the camera, which is why it's moving around nicely and uh, why I'm talking to somebody besides you find people out on the internet. The, uh, well, that's neat. Check this out. So it's just a, a, bo a controller box. It's all anodized and aluminum again. It's all like pre-cut, pre- cut pre See guys, pre -tapped. yeah, pre-tapped. So, okay, honestly, guys, I know I'm like, I'm gonna be all goo goo over this thing because you know, granted, Inventables again did send it to me, uh, and I can't thank them enough because this thing, like, seriously, when you work on enough stuff, enough 3D printers, enough woodworking stuff, there's definitely like, you know, the cheap 3D printers, the cheap like Harbor Freight tool stuff, and then there's the nice like, you know, Porter Cable, Dewalt, you know, big heavy. Like, you know, for me, I like a lot of Grizzly Tool stuff, but, you know, stuff like this where it's just, like, really, like, you can tell it's quality by the fit, right? I mean, like, you can tell that, you know, they're not goofing around. They could have made this thing out of plastic or something. I mean, it's all tapped. It's all, like, you know, perfectly straight. It's anodized. It's, I mean, it looks nice. It's just nice. I mean... I don't know. This isn't a cheap thing, right? This kit as it sits delivered is like 1500 bucks. Now, granted, you know, that's cheaper than an Ultimaker. So sure you have to assemble this yourself, but it's at least that quality. Hey, okay. So the main controller is an Arduino. So this is probably a daughter board, which probably explains what the header is for. Granted, we still haven't looked at instructions. We're just going through the box. And of course it comes with, okay, here. Here, we'll harp about one thing. Because this needs to be longer. Now granted, for like 10 bucks, you can buy a 20 foot one. Um, it's a USB 2.0 cable. And it looks like it's about a six footer. It's from monoprice.com. Hey Steve, how you doing buddy? I'm waiting for that stuff. Steve, Steve, Steve. Stop talking to people that have more than 17,000 subs, Steve. We need switch boxes over here. 1440p switch boxes. 4K switch boxes. That's what we want to look at. You got to get me hooked up. Anyways, if you guys didn't know, Steve from New Egg TV is now over at Monoprice. Uh, congratulations. Uh, looks like he's already doing a kick-ass job over there. So I just thought I'd give a shout-out. If you want to watch him, he's on Twitch. Yeah, you can follow him... I think it's Steve underscore OMG or OMG underscore Steve. Look at my Twitter. I follow him and I don't follow that many people. Uh, follow him up there. He does a show called Master in Minutes. Great Twitch stream about, you know, mastering video games or something. I don't know. I've never actually watched. But anyways, it's awesome. So you should watch it. We have drag chain. There's two drag chains. Uh, again, you know, it's just like, some drag chains you pick up, they're cheap, thin plastic, uh, while these are still plastic because they're drag chains. At least I think they're plastic. Let's confirm that before I'm a jackass about it. Okay. <sighs> Holy shit, that's sharp. Oh yeah, no, they're metal. Oh wait, now they're plastic. They're just really heavy plastic. So the drag chain, really, you know, nice thick plastic. Uh, you know, it's just stuff like they could, in theory, sell this machine without a drag chain. I mean, you could. There's a lot of 3D printers that don't come with drag chains. Uh, but this is moving a larger distance. You, you're going to want to keep, especially the 31-inch version, you want to keep the cables up off, 
you know, what you're routing. You don't want them to get snagged. You don't want to pull them from the head. So, you know, nice quality drag chain. We have a tool kit, which I like, you know, Inventables. And what do we got in here? I haven't actually looked in here yet. So we got, it comes with, uh, you know, metric and something in the pocket. It's actually kind of a cool little tool kit. Oh my God, there's like safety glasses, which wear your safety glasses. I actually have prescription lenses that have shields on them because I have little known fact. So a lot of people say, you know, wearing your regular prescription glasses is good enough. When you're working with something like this, it's not. If you get, if you have a bit shatter or you have a large chunk of debris and you're turned to the side, guaranteed it's going to go right between. I've actually had a piece of metal come from behind me and it was actually off of a drill press. Uh, come from behind me, hit my glasses and go into my eye, wound up in the emergency room. So I actually have a pair uh, of regular prescription glasses that have, um, they're just little plastic shields that you can buy to put on them. So I wear those when I'm doing any woodworking. Uh, doesn't take but one time for you to learn that that's kind of a big fucking deal. Because uh, it sucks. I mean, really bad. So, hex head screwdriver and a bunch of smaller stuff that they don't want to fall out. But it is cool they, you know, they put this in. If, like here, you can see what I'm talking about on these. Because I won't need them, obviously. But, you know, maybe Jason will someday. Or my wife, who knows? So you can see what I'm talking about with these, where they have like the kick out on the side. So that should be almost touching your cheek. Uh, my normal woodworking, um, if I feel like I'm gonna do something that's even more aggressive, I'm gonna be getting a lot of dust in my face. I have a full face shield, but I also have a pair of these that not only have a kick out on the side, they have a kick out on the bottom. So it comes back to my, on the top and the bottom. It comes back to my eyes because I've also got I've got a wood splinter in my eye as well. Didn't wind up in the emergency room for that, but that sucked too. So we got that. And this is just, you know, listen, they don't have to give you this nice, you know. It's nice that you can put all of the stuff, if you have bits, you can throw bits in here. It's nice that you can just keep everything together and, like, keep it next to, you know, where you're doing the work. And obviously you can see, okay, someday guys, someday we'll get to these two bins. I promise. 90, like 16,950 of you could give a rat's ass, but uh, N scale train stuff and Lionel. And I've got LGB stuff, but it's up in my parents' house. So the uh, someday Timmy Toy TV will have this stuff on there. Uh, whenever I get bored with computer stuff and awesome routing tables, I guess. But one of the things I'm actually going to do with this routing table is I'm going to build a, a case uh, for the end scale stuff so I can display it. Uh, all, all you really need is, you know, a couple of sides, but I want like nice dovetails and things. So, you know, it'll be cool. And I can route the plexiglass so I can put like custom logos in the plexi or something. Uh, 1,000 millimeters of wiring with a million terminal connections. That's going to be awesome. Uh, the other bag that really scares me from a, like, wow, once we get this done, it's going to be awesome, but it's really going to suck until then, is uh, these are for the bottom. <laughs> um, and I really hope it's not to, like, level something. They're threaded inserts. I have no idea what they're actually for yet, but there's a lot of them. We have, oh yeah, so your belts. So these are, and I, let's see if I can remember what the, oh yeah, GT2. So GT2 belts, the only belt that anything should ever use. They're square or square-er, and you don't get backlash as much uh, when you're like, so say, say you have, um, you know, two humps and your belt is coming in, you know, this way and your, your gear is turning. When it's a, a, a rounded, like a TA belt, it's rounded, so if it kind of sits off, it's gonna to wanna to rock back into its lock position. Where with square teeth, they're always gonna to wanna to lock in the position they stop at. They're not gonna slip as much, so you're not gonna get like backlash when you uh, when it stops. And where you see that with 3D printing is like, 
say you have like an edge, a line around the outside of something and your, your back and forth doesn't exactly hit the same spot every time, it's because given the steps you're doing, it doesn't actually line up the steps to the kind of belt or pulley you have every time. So if you want to see stuff, go to YouTube. Uh, just look for like anti-backlash, stuff like that. And usually you can find a couple of really good videos about it. A clamp set, which I don't know how theirs is going to work, but I have the wall of clamps over there. Um, but always nice to have. And these actually uh, will clamp down into, actually that might be, that might be what these are for. So you can screw these down to the table. We have, yeah, I don't know. Wallow clamps, wallow clamps, wallow clamps. I'm making sure to do it for way longer than I think I need. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with that. We also have an Acme screw. So guys, my solid doodle has taught me that you can buy substandard parts for things and ship them out and make, you know, 30 cents more a part. Or... You can buy, you can provide things like Acme lead screws, which are the Z-axis screw that moves the gantry up and down. Uh, the difference here is, like say threaded rod, which is what's in my solid doodle. One revolution of that may travel, you know, 1200 steps. One revolution of this may travel 12 steps. It depends on the coarseness of the Acme screw. So what that gives you is Z-level, um, accuracy right so when a lot of 3d printers um you know the thing that they really don't tell you is the accuracy from their their 3d printer when they go down to like you know 0.1 or 0.02 like the ultimaker does uh the the acme screw is actually a lot of where that resolution comes from because you know side to side it's nozzle size so they could put a really 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 small nozzle on it and feed it really really slow and get really, you know, like 0 .001, like really, really fine. It would take you a million hours to print anything. But when it steps going up and down, the accuracy that it can step at is, you know, a lot of times the, the limiting factor. So when you're doing stuff like woodworking, you know, you really only have to go to 164th of an inch probably, maybe 128th of an inch, like something in that range, because, you are you know, you're doing woodworking. Um so you have a little more they could have probably got away with threaded screw but they don't they provide the right thing and again you know i'm, I'm sure i'm sound like a inventables fanboy but you know deal with it we have a mill end starter set so they do give you five bits that's nice um i definitely will be buying a lot more keep a million of these things on hand and guys do not buy cheap ass drill bits it's going to hurt. You're going to feel like you're kicked in the balls when you buy really good ones. Buy hardened steel or carbide. Buy the ones that won't shatter. Spend the money to buy the right bits. And uh, you won't get it in the face or something. Because let me tell you, when a drill bit lets go, going 20,000 RPMs, uh, you're not going to have a good day. And it sounds like, like a thunderclap. Like it's like, bam! And little tiny shards of metal go everywhere. And one big shard goes flying. So... Oh, limit switches, which I didn't see the limit switches anywhere, but they're obviously here somewhere. They're probably in, yeah, I don't know. They're here somewhere. So limit switches, obviously, you don't have to build with limit switches. It's just, it keeps you from crashing the build platform or the routing platform into something else. So it just basically like, you know, you want to home it. You can say, you know, go to zero. And if zero winds up being like, you know, plus 20 and it's still trying to go to zero, it's going to hit the limit switch and stop it there. So just basically set zero and then in the software you set it as home or whatever. So that's all the components, guys. Um, this is a crazy long-winded vlog, but I just really wanted to show you kind of what comes in a kit like this. Uh, you know, a lot of people aren't familiar with CNC machines. They're much older technology than 3D printers. I mean, this stuff's been around easily since the 60s or 70s. It's just not in this kind of like small package. They were in, you know, multi-million dollar ginormous machines. So now we're starting to see 
you know, from a woodworking perspective, it's pretty cool to see like the stuff's coming into a home garage. Like I, it blows my mind. Like Ben Heck is kind of my DIY hero on YouTube and he has an, a four foot by eight foot uh, CNC. And like, I would love to get one of those and put it in here. First of all, it's way more money than I can afford. And second of all, where, where am I going to put it? Like we're putting this together in my parking spot. So, you know, 31 by 31, sure I can't route, you know, four by eight sheets of plywood, which would be really nice. But this is going to let almost everybody get familiar with the concepts of CNC mills, CNC machines. Okay, guys, so just wanted to do, you know, a quick overview of all this stuff. I know when I say quick, it's probably a 25 minute video because that's usually how I roll. But, you know, again, I want to say thank you to Inventables for giving me the opportunity to take a look at this, put it together, find out for you guys. You know, we're going to do a little kind of like not super in-depth, uh, you know, instruction video on how to put it all together. But we are going to do, you know, like where we find, you know, these are the hard things. These are the things you might want two people for. Here's, you know, we put this together five times and here's a trick we found. We're definitely going to do something like that. And we're going to take a look at, you know, how it does, what, you know, what can we cut? We're definitely going to cut like, you know, plexi and wood and aluminum. Maybe we do a case, who knows? Like, cause frankly, you know, if I get a little mini bend, that's all you really need. You, you know, you can, you can make a case without curves. We could be making our own, like, you know, cool little cases or, ginormous water cooling cases who you know granted ginormous no more than 31 inches tall but there is a trick to get around that which i'm going to try when this gets together i have a feeling you can make things bigger than 31 inches if you're very accurate with your clamping we'll see however this is tim for timmy tech tv guys check us out shop.timmytechtv.com you can get pint glasses, mugs, t-shirts, same provider that does tech syndicate stuff. Thanks to Logan for helping me get it set up and John over at Vermont Printing. It's awesome stuff, guys. Check it out. It's got the Airship logo from the channel. Uh, I really like them. I got a couple of shirts, which of course I'm not wearing now, but I don't want to get it, you know, dirty with the stuff. I also have like a couple of mugs and stuff. I really like what they look like. Check that out again, shop.timmytechtv.com. If you want to follow me on social media, the gateway to all social media, the gateway is Twitter because that's where I'm the most active. So at Timmy Tech TV on Twitter, um, you know, I'm very responsive there. So go ahead and ask me any questions you have. Uh, I'm obviously waking up the neighbors. So this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV and uh, being way too loud outside at 10 o'clock at night. We'll see you next time. Toys, toys. toys. <laughs> what, what, what is it? It's an X carve. <laughs>